Hey, what's up guys? It's Garfi Phoenix back with another video today. Today, you guys are seeing your first video on the brand new camera that I got for Christmas. Well, at least partially for Christmas. It's the Canon 80D with the shotgun mic and a brand new tripod. So, so with that being said, this video is going to be about a, a, well, it's a reptile room tour for you guys. There is some very sad news that some of you guys may have seen if you follow me on Instagram, but with that being said, why don't we just get onto the video and get onto this brand new new year, new goals. Let's get started. So to start off the tour the way that those of you have seen uh, my Instagram post may have expected, unfortunately, I did have to put Kai down. I'm really not going to go into it in this video. I will be posting a video in probably a couple days from now just going over what happened, what can be done better, and if I'll be getting another chameleon. But with that being said, we can actually move on to Dixon, the beautiful Europlatus gecko. I don't think he's actually out right now, unfortunately. Yeah, I can see his tail back there in that bamboo. He always chills in that bamboo there. But yeah, th this is his cage. You guys can see it. It's currently a 12 by 12 by 18. Zoomed, actually, it's my only Zoomed tank. It's filled with live plants, leaf litter, a little bit of wood, bamboo. What's going on here is actually there's a, uh, I believe it's a Peperomia obtusifolia, a ficus, um, I don't remember the name of the tree, uh, and then a uh, elastic tree or a uh, gum tree, I think they're also called. I can't remember exactly what they're called. He's doing awesome, he's growing. His light setup is very basic. Uh, he has UV there, and then just a fluval for plant growth, just for some light. Up here, we have Striker. This will hopefully be the last Reptile Room tour where he is not in his new setup. I'm not gonna bother him too much right now. This will probably end up being a little bit shorter of a reptile room tour. You guys can just check out how good the tank is doing. Um, it's pretty basic, nothing's really changed. Very soon, uh, I will actually have a brand new tank for him, custom made by a guy here locally that I will uh, promote a little bit in the setup of his new tank. But with that being established with Striker, we can actually move on to Sky, the Meraki Butung Skink. He's still in his old enclosure. I'm going to be texting my buddy pretty soon to see uh, if the new tank has even been started yet. I don't think it has because last time I talked to him, he said that he was very busy. But you guys can just see here. He's doing awesome. He has UVB. He's got heat, water bowl, hide, hide. Uh, there's a tile under that dirt there. But he is doing incredible. And then some of you guys were a little worried in the last couple Reptile Room Tours, Stella has passed away if you missed them. Um, it was actually in a vlog I did. I came into my room and found her. If you guys are curious on what vlog that is, I'll just leave a link up at the top of the screen there for you guys to check it out. As unfortunate as it is that Stella has passed away, that does open the door for me to uh, look for a brand new Red Aki. I will hopefully be bringing one in from Europe. Um, come March, I believe it should be here. And that will allow me to have new bloodlines and uh, just continue these fabulous species in captivity, hopefully. His tank is a four by two by two, uh, custom built by my buddy Jordan. Um, he's got, well, a lay box in there, not that he really needs it, some water. Bowser is just down there. There he is, just lounging. He's got a little bit of stuck shed on his arm there, but I've been giving him baths daily, so that should just come off naturally quite soon. He's extremely red, and he's doing really, really well. My room has been getting really cold at nighttime. It is kind of nice that it drops down at nighttime, simply because it gives them a bit of a, uh, a winter drop, uh, almost like what you'd expect in the wild just because um, the temperatures will decrease over time and you might actually be going for a drink we'll see here Ooh. yeah there you go 
Yummy. So it is kind of fortunate. Uh, it does give a decrease for my your platus gecko. It gives a little bit of a temperature break to everyone. And then come springtime again, all the temperatures will be shot back up into the 80s ambient. And uh, yeah, we'll go over to the shellman here. I'm not going to weigh him in this video simply because my battery is flashing and I don't know how much longer it's going to last. Shellman's doing really, really well. As you can see, I did try and make a, a, I tried to outfit his cage with some palm trees and he's knocked over and flattened one of them back there. He's pushed this one under the light so it's burning. The ponytail palm at the back there is actually living simply because it's got such a huge base and he can't just like easily push it over. And this one he pushed his feeding dish into. So it's a little bit slanted. But uh, other than that, he's doing really well. And there he is. The man, the myth, the legend. Mr. Shell, what's up buddy? How are you? He's got a mercury vapor bulb there. He's got a UVB 10.0. Uh, bulb there, so He's got plenty of UV plenty of heat and he's doing very very well moving away from the Chelonians we have the dig echoes As you can see one of them right there These guys are getting almost full-grown. I still haven't noticed all that much aggression in the tank uh, I don't see any scars on them at all I just make sure they're well fed and doing well. I will have these guys up for sale very, very soon simply because they're all pretty much the size where I could sell them now. And, and that, that's the size that I'm comfortable selling them. So if you're in Calgary or Red Deer or somewhere close to me, then definitely shoot me a message and uh, I'd be very interested in selling them to you. I know my buddy was going to take them. I don't know if that's the case anymore. So. If that's not the case, then they're up for sale to anyone who wants them. So, uh, if you're in Canada, I can ship to you. However, you gotta keep in mind that, A, I probably wouldn't be able to ship them for quite some time simply because it is so cold. And uh, B, it does cost a fair amount extra to have them shipped. I mean, the geckos themselves, I'll sell them for probably about $70 each. And then shipping on top of that, for if you bought one gecko shipping would be the same as if you bought two so if you bought one uh, or two the shipping would be probably in and around hundred and thirty dollars or so know what you're getting yourselves into before you contact me and if you're outside of Canada I cannot ship them to you Tig is doing really well this is her tank right here she's doing fantastic however uh, I don't think we're gonna be able to get into her cage to actually, oh, nope, she is out. Not really, it's having a little bit of trouble just because it's such low light and I'm shooting at 60 frames a second, so. Uh, her tank's doing incredible. Uh, I moved this cork dog up rather than sitting on the ground. It is now up and at them. I also added another plant at the back there. Again, this is an elastic tree or something like that. I can't remember. Other than that, yeah, there's not too much to say about her. She's looking great. Doing well. In here, uh, I'll approach him slowly. But that right there is the Leucomelos frog, the dart frog, Dendrobates Leucomelos. I put him in here. He's a Guyan in yellow for those that actually care. And I put him in here just so I could have another tank set up. This was the old Ufaga Pumilio Almirante tank. And I had this guy formerly right over there uh, in that little container. Uh, with just a little tiny light above him, so I'm sure he's pretty thrilled to be in a much larger enclosure It's totally naturalistic. It's all um, Nicely planted you can see that it has a ton of different plants. We got Syngonium rei There's actually an orchid there There's uh, some bromeliads a begonia right up front here. There is abusive philandro right on the edge and then some different ficus. Uh, we have an orchid that's really not doing well, a jewel orchid, and then some other random plants. So, and unfortunately, that's where my new DSLR's uh, camera battery actually died. So, I will be continuing on my Olympus camera. 
Uh, the audio will probably sound a little bit different, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles. I really want to get this video out for you guys. And uh, since I've been back from Phoenix and stuff, I've been kind of slacking because I've been with family and my girlfriend pretty much every day. So <laughs> moving on to the actually animals itself. This tank, I do not see any frogs currently, unfortunately. The tank is looking incredible. Uh, just look at the reds on that. I don't remember the name of that plant. Um, the begonia is growing massive. Uh, the log is looking ridiculous. The Anubius coffee folia is making a new leaf. It's kind of unfortunate. I thought we'd be able to see these guys, but apparently we will not. That is the Dendrobates erratus tank. These are the Ufaga pumilio amarente. This tank is still looking terrible. Yeah, this this is just a little bit more of a disaster tank. Uh, I was originally making that other, well, the tank you guys are about to see. For this group, however, my buddy was able to sell me the Ufaga Pumilio Rio Calubre a little bit faster than I expected. So I just had to hop on those and upgrade the the three that I had into a new tank. Um, I do have another uh, bromeliad that I'm going to stick in here. I do need to clean this one up quite a bit as you guys can see. These guys are doing great. There's plenty of calling. There are still some eggs being laid. But due to the severe lack of bromeliads in this tank, um, I don't think they're actually depositing the eggs. In fact, I believe the eggs are actually drying out. So, not an ideal situation. However, this is just what I got going on right now. Again, after Bane's new tank and Striker's upgrade, I will be making an upgrade for the Almirante. I do have two 18 by 18 by 24 exoterras sitting right there. And then right there, is my 18 by uh, 18 front to back 24 by 24 um, exoterra that will be for Bane. We can move down here to the real Calubre. I don't see these guys very often. They're quite secretive. Uh, I don't, I don't fully know where they are or what they're doing all the time. Every now and then I'll see them come out. Uh, mostly they just hang out in that bromeliad back there. Uh, there's plenty of Brahms as you guys can see But they they just don't come out that often so Unfortunately, I can't force them to and then the last dart frog Lee business that we have to cover Are the Dendrobates Azurius Tinctorius? These guys are growing like weeds honestly They're doing really well. I'm <laughs> not going to spend too much time focusing on them simply because they are getting quite big, they're getting a lot more bold, and uh, yeah, they're still in that 12 by 12 by 12 exoterra. So if there's anybody in Calgary, uh, I'm not going to ship these guys, but if there's anybody watching this in Calgary, Alberta, then hit me up if you want some uh, some nice looking Dendrobates Azurius Tinctorius. Well, Tinctorius Azurius. And then the last, but the certainly not least, and I didn't clean his enclosure, just to show you guys how much of an asshole he really is. <laughs> this is Bane, the new Ana cross new Ami, Lichionis Gecko. I'm getting right up in his grill. Just hanging out right there. His UVB light is on right now because it has been off for a week while I was away. Um, so I figured I'd just turn it on for him to get some nice UVB exposure. He can go to the bottom of his log and get out of it if he wants to. So you guys can see he is getting some exposure right now. So that's going to wrap up the tour for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I had fun making it. I, I really need to plan better for these because... Hopefully next month, if I can get it uh, ready and prepared in time, then I will have a... Uh a reptile room tour where I actually take out most of the animals uh, or the animals that can be taken out. Obviously I'm not going to hold things like the day geckos and the dart frogs. But for the animals that are holdable, I will bring them out and we can talk a little bit about them, a little bit about their care. It'll be a much longer video and uh, yeah, so that's 
that will hopefully be coming in February. I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas, had a Merry Christmas, have a Happy New Year, and let's start this New Year's off on a positive note. I want you guys to really reach up, grab whatever goals that you guys have, and strive for them as much as you can. Me personally, what I'm really looking forward to is I'm actually going for a school trip in May, so more details about that later. But uh, I guess working towards that is going to be one of my goals, as well as really upgrading pretty much all my animals, especially the ones that need upgrades, obviously, and getting them all into the proper size habitats, uh, UVB, heat, everything that I possibly can do for them so that they uh, live long, happy lives. That is my goal for this year, and you guys need to make one for yourself as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like down below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, leave them in the comment section, and be prepared for some incredible videos coming out in the next two weeks, three weeks or so. I got some, I got some bangers while I was in Phoenix. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel and click that subscribe button if you want to see more of my YouTube videos. If you want to get notified when I go live and when I post a video, you can actually click the ding dong, the, the, the bell sign next to the subscription button and be notified. So have a good one guys, Graphic Phoenix, out of here. <laughs>